Okay then. And putting my intro back in for every 10th video. And for those of you just joining us, this is part 10 of my Let's Play for Mass Effect 3. And for the record, if you haven't watched the others, feel free to go back and check those out at any time. Um, otherwise, for those of you who have been following, welcome back. Uh, I believe the last time we had left off with, uh, with me doing some exploring again and going through the Normandy and now I'm loading back up to continue where I left off. Don't forget... Uh, I, I'm sorry, I forget where this left off. But if I remember correctly, I think I picked up somewhere on the Normandy and then like went on to another mission. And we're going to go ahead and see here. Ah, here we are. Yep, right where I left off, wandering around the engineering deck. Okay, and I believe this is where I have a conversation with the shuttle pilot. As well as check out all the different consoles and stuff. Requisitions, yes! As you get weapons in this game, you can come here and update the weapons you've got, making them stronger, lighter, and giving them better ammo capacity. Now as you upgrade them, it gets expensive. Very expensive. At one point I think I was spending enough in weapons to probably buy several ships. And then over here is the lieutenant. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. Got news about our supply chains, Commander. And he's there, soldier. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. No problem. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. Yeah. So you do care, Mr. Vega. Or is that the Cerveza talking again? <laughs> so what's happening yeah. with your supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. Yeah. So, you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dock ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M44 Hammerhead. Which, you'll my notice, is no longer for me to take over in the cargo bay. Director. I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. Well, great. Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. <laughs> you know you and there's Vega know doing chin-ups and stuff. <laughs> Typical Marine. The first retrofit we did was to move like I said, I really get, to, I do get to I'm like sure Vega down the road. Now but when I first started, I just thought him to be a little bit irritating. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. <laughs> you were stationed on Earth. You have family there? Now this is an interesting I'm thing. They've always allowed female characters to have female relationships, at least with Liara. The and then in part two, they added additionals. I'd not but in the third game, they actually had the ability to do... Good eye, um, male on male relationships, which I thought was, you know, so sort of like why did it take so long? But by the same token, I never really cared. Yeah, I know there's people out there who thought it was, you know, should be part of it and it should be equal and all that, and that's great, great. You know, I'm glad they got all that arranged, but truthfully, didn't care. I was like, whatever. I still think that they do play it well with this because they give him a lot of humanity and it turns out that he's a, a real person he's not some stereotype yes commander now you may have noticed in the background the robot dog the Fenris wandering around and for the record the first time I saw that my first instinct was to go for the gun button and blow it apart because if you played the last game you remember hating the blasted things it's ironic that in in this game I didn't actually talk to Vega for like God who knows how many 
sessions I had in the Normandy before I actually talked to the guy. But I didn't actually care. It didn't interest me. Now, of course, having had time to play through and, you know, get more information about the character, and having had several playthroughs, I've actually come to like him a lot. But that being said, this was my first playthrough, and I was more interested in getting through and sort of seeing everything the game had to offer. Now, the CIC and everything is pretty much exactly as it was in the last game, so that's no big deal. But I'm sort of disappointed that they took out all the extra dialogue for Jokler. A real live Prothean? A real live Prothean, yes! I'm glad everybody's enjoying the new crew member. Could we get back to freaking work? <laughs> when I heard they were doing the Kinect stuff for the game, I thought that'd be cool if you could actually go out and shout like beratements at people. It's like walk up to Joker, Joker, fly the ship. Stop gabbing. Truth is, I think his dialogue is hilarious. But that's just, you know, me wanting to be silly. Eden Prime. And when yes, we are leaving. Now, I believe that this is where I do some of the plant scanning stuff. And I am going to have it here, but in future incidents, I'll probably wind up cutting it out of the bulk of the series. Simply because later on in the game, there is so much of it. But I want you guys to at least see how it works. I don't recall if I did it here or not. I found something. And I'll notice the moment I use that scanning system, the enemies were alerted to my presence, and the bar like shot up big time. And here's the trick: I've turned down the volume on this so you don't get blasted by it. But if you've played the game, you know that if you set that bar to maximum, by accident or not, it makes a horrifying sound and you must run for your life. And I believe I'll demonstrate that momentarily. Remains of a Reaper Destroyer. So somebody took one of those freaking things down. Coolness. Now, I don't know why I went back to the planet twice. I probably was just bored or looking for more info. And then here, they did leave the scanning mechanic, but it's nowhere near as onerous as it was in the last game. Usually, you're pretty close to your target right off the bat. Alliance Naval Expedition... F oh, Exploration Fleet. I can't read today. Of course, I'm looking at this at, like, you know, a micronized screen. And here's where I'm, like, trying to guess if there's anything of value there. And then I'm going to do a pulse. And... Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to run away. Run away! Run away! It's like, seriously, you see the Reapers appear on the screen and you just freak. Because they are literally, like... You can't fight them in the game as a general rule. They will just annihilate you if you try. And I think that's kind of silly. I, I thought there was a lost opportunity there for you to have, like, a anti-Reaper assault minigame. Like, you could actually, you know, run up and do, you know assaults on reapers and fly the Normandy. That would have been cool. Pardon me while I'm getting a drink. But the war acid thing is an interesting compromise between, you know, the scanning project from the last game where you were scanning for minerals all over the place and where in this game rather than looking for minerals or supplies you're looking for literally nothing but, you know, war, war machines, fleets, scientists, equipment, stuff you would actually need to accomplish your goal. For example, here's a shattered fuel depot. I steal fuel from it. And that's actually something that I think they had meant to implement that so that you actually had to do a more thorough job of navigating that junk where you'd have to try and find fuel on the go. But then, 
it really becomes onerous and almost irritating because there are no indications of where one of those things is. So it's all like super total guesswork. Scanning. And then scanning here. And like I said, you're normally like right on top of the target almost. What did I get this time? Javelin missile launcher. And there is a uh, there is a cool thing where these items that you're acquiring now do eventually show up as part of you know later missions and the the big fleet actions and junk. Now here's an interesting thing. One of the ways they kept you from just scanning, leaving, and coming back was that once you've scanned an area to red line, signal confirmed. You can't actually go back into it until you've finished a mission. The moment you do, the Reapers assault you, and you have to run away again. So it does wind up being, you know, one of those things where you have to be careful to find as much as you can because every time you have to run a mission, you're one step closer to finishing the game, even if it is a side mission. It's one more thing out of the way that you can not do again to get rid of that red line. Now here we're going to Sanctum, which is some sort of Cerberus lab or some junk like that. I forget the specifics behind it, but I believe you're just going there to shut the lab down and steal some stuff. Now, Javik is not yet available because he's still recovering after waking up after a 50,000 year, you know, hibernation. So it's me, Liara, and James as usual. I do like that they give James like the biggest, heaviest weapon, even though you can't actually get that weapon at this point. But you'll notice now that depending upon the weapon you equip, like if you take the particle rifle, it, it overloads you quite heavily. But if I take the Vindicator, which I've since upgraded, uh, upgraded, sorry, it's now you know much lighter than it was previously because I upgraded the weapon. Same with the N7 Eagle. And you can actually equip James with whatever weapons you like. And I usually try to give him just the heaviest death dealers. And I've got some mods I can give it. I don't have any mods for the heavier weapons yet. Now I don't know that equipping mods for weight on these characters really has that big of an impact. But it's supposed to have the same effect on them that it does on you. So I think I'm going to... Yeah, go for Bioc Mastery or something. First I auto... Oh. I guess I didn't. I guess I waited until I got more points. And this is the thing that, you know, I didn't like about this game. In the previous game, all the content for the game was staggered very well. The content for the first portion of the game was all on the first disc. And then the second portion of the game was all on the second disc. And then they had a little bit of the end game on the first disc again. In this game, what they did was all main level activities are on the first disc. So every major mission, every major event, all that stuff is all on the first disc. But then on the other side, every side mission is on the secondary disc. The only exception are like communal areas like the Citadel are on both. As far as I could tell anyway. Although there are a few missions on the Citadel that wind up being only on certain discs. But it is handy that you can sort of drop in and out of the, the areas that you want to play through simply by making sure you're using a specific disc. Like if you're doing mostly side missions and you haven't decided to do a main mission yet, 
you can stick to that main mission or those side missions as you want and then when you have them ready you can go over to the main mission and just swap the disc out not exactly the best method but it did the job yeah great that's wonderful put him through lieutenant Shepard we've uncovered a secret service lab function unknown we sent in a recon team but they were forced to pull out before they got very far any other intel we think they're using the facility to warehouse and study Reaper tech. We've been wondering how service is connected to the Reapers, and this might give us some answers. We're okay. on it. Find out what service is doing and get me any Reaper tech samples you can, Commander. Hack it out. Yeah, now I remember. This is... Basically, you run in, you grab stuff, you kill guys, and you leave. Not complicated, but a fun little romp. Now, this area is more or less just a, a series of tight corridors and rooms. Pardon me. It's very early in the morning when I'm recording this. Aha. Uh -huh. Snagging stuff and stealing stuff. Will well. only lead to Metagel advances for Hanar. Only Cerberus would call that a failure. Yep, and that's why we don't like them no more. Hello, I'm being shot at. Now you're flying through the air and whacking against the wall. And there's James with that massive particle beam. That becomes one of my favorite weapons, but I never wielded it. Because in the in the long run of playing the character, it wasn't worth it for my particular biotic. I mean, what was the point of having that heavy weapon when I was mostly using biotic abilities anyway? Later on in the game, as you get, you know, more characters, I always give them that particle rifle. Although now we know where they got the particle weaponry for the collectors. Oh, and he whacked against the wall. Yeah, I love that the shockwave just sort of throws the guy across the room. It's like, yeah, you go flying. And I can pop him off really fast because I'm lightly armed. So I can, you know, throw my biotic abilities around like nobody's business. I've actually seen it done once or twice where someone's doing like a pistol only biotic run. And they like throw a biotic attack every 20 seconds. Which is pretty cool. I, I don't argue that. If you can make it work, it's a great idea, but it makes some of the fights hard because, especially some of the boss fights, you just can't whack enough damage into them. Good work. And you're relying too much on your backup. And admittedly, with the proper balance, the biotics, especially with uh, with good aim and practice, allows you to really just ruin people's day. I do love how they just sort of disintegrate when they get hit by the biotic warp. It's like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm gonna make it. I'm, and they're just vaporized. And the warp does damage over time, and at maximum power, it can really hurt. Especially when you're like fighting multiple enemies, you'll 
hit one dude with warp and then focus on another. And when you turn around, the dude with warp's almost dead anyway. I think I steal like two devices here. <laughs> he walked right into a biotic blast. I bet that hurts. I rarely use singularity, actually. It's sort of a weird thing about me. I don't use singularity as much as I should, probably because I'm too busy whacking people with the shockwave and the warp. I do like having certain abilities as backups, like uh, slam or... You know, if I were playing a defensive character, I'd be using uh, Barrier. And Barrier was always one of my favorites. Grenades! Grenades are great just for suppression. I mean, you don't have to... <laughs> I like Vega, I can do this all day. But you don't have to use them as a direct assault. Just hurling them at your enemies is enough to drive them back. Now here I grab the submachine gun because I'm expecting to go close range. And I show up and Vega's ripping them apart with a particle rifle. Grenades! That's the one thing about the grenades is if you're not careful, they will bounce back and hit you in the face. Oh, they're using smoke screen. And the particle rifle is interesting because it's one of those weapons where it doesn't actually require ammo. It just recharges over time. Which means it's extremely good if you're doing a low ammo run, like if you only have it as a weapon. It allows you to just, you know, hold enemies back with biotic firepower. And then you can, you know, keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them. And even with shielded enemies like those guys, they're still vulnerable to the attack, they're just not killed by it instantly. Ooh, looks like somebody's on the ground. Oh, Liar. Yeah, it's just, I find that funny that of all the characters you have, she's like the first to go down every time. Sky high achievement. Bullet, bullet, bullet in the face. And he's dead. I love that. Biotic punch! Can't do Captain Falcon though. It's just too hard on my larynx. I feel sorry for the voice actor for that guy. Because he has to scream that at the top of his lungs. I, remember, I don't remember the exact game, but there was a, a game where one of the characters was played by a voice actor who was notorious for doing really high power, loud screaming to the point where in one of his previous jobs he had broken multiple microphones. For extraction point now. And actually it was a running joke on the forum was that, you know, did he break a microphone this time? But I do love that, you know, move where it's just, you know, biotic punch! And you deck the guy and he goes flying. Like I said, when you play as a soldier or like an engineer or a sentinel or any, well, I think the sentinel's the one with the dual blades, but they use the Omni knife, which is, you know, a blade that comes out of the light based weaponry they use. But uh, with the biotics, it's just, I guess, more natural for them to biotically deck you in the face. And I. Don't know what other thing I was building up to, but I'm, I think I got like 40% of the achievements in like the first hour and a half I played this or something. Okay, maybe that's exaggerating, but, but I got a ton of achievements by the end of the first time I played this. It's time to leave. Like now, or like yesterday. And I do like the fact that this game runs very well, but I think we're going to have to cut that one short. Eh, we'll see how it goes. But I do love this game's you know, attention to detail and everything. 
an effort to make it feel like you know this is still part of the same contiguous world, except now the world has gone to hell. And let's see what Hackett has got to say. What was Cerberus doing with it? We don't know yet, but whatever Cerberus is up to, it can't be good. You got that Even right. if we can't determine its purpose, we've disrupted their experiments. I doubt they'll just close up shop. Agreed. We'll keep sending strikes against the facility. Good work, Commander. And I think a lot of the multiplayer content is extensions of this stuff. I think we're about to wrap this up here. And yeah, I'm checking my war assets, but we're going to stop for now, and I'll see you next time.